Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems and Boris Effects, and today we're going to show you beauty work techniques using the BCC 10 tools and Mocha inside the Pixel Chooser. We're going to take this older woman and we're going to do a dramatic change, what I call a narrative change. We're going to go ahead and take her back about 40 years. We're going to use the Pixel Chooser for masking, and we're going to use the Beauty Studio tools and the Remover tool to erase her wrinkles. Every technique that I'm going to show you for masking can be accomplished with the bundled Mocha for After Effects or the new Mocha Pro, but we're going to focus on the BCC Pixel Chooser right now. The first step is to find the BCC Pixel Chooser inside of the Effects panel. We then have to change the output to Stencil Alpha, and then inside of the Mat, we change the channel to None. Next, we can minimize our parameters and launch Mocha using the Mocha button. Once inside of Mocha, I can select my X-Blind tool and start to draw a shape around the object that I want to track. In this case, we're going to track her neck because we're going to need to apply some smoothing to her neck in order to get rid of the wrinkles. This tutorial assumes that you have watched the BCC Fundamentals tutorials, and so we're not going to go too in-depth into Roto. We're going to create a bunch of shapes and track them all at the same time. Notice how I'm drawing shapes around her problem areas, like underneath her eyes or the crow's feet at the edges of her eyes or things like the deep wrinkles around the sides of her mouth, or things like her under eyes. We can even select her eyebrows, and we're going to need to roto the rest of her hair as well so that we can do color corrections on that. Once we are satisfied that all of our shapes are correct, we can simply select Track Forward, and this track has been sped up. Once our tracking is complete, we can then scrub through our timeline and then correct our shapes wherever they are off. And then Mocha will actually animate between our hand animation and the track so that we don't have to do as much rotoscoping work. This is how we can cut your roto time in half and cut your keyframes down to about a third of what you would normally use. Once you're done tracking, you want to turn off all of your gears. And in this case, we're actually going to make several more shapes, but you don't want to track too many shapes at the same time, so we didn't make all of these and then track them. Also, once you're done with some basic tracks, you can link new shapes to those basic tracks. In this case, we're going to track the top of her eyes so that we can take care of these wrinkles that make her look older, and we're going to link those tracks to her eyebrows. Now what that does is that gives us the track so that we don't have to retrack, but we can still animate over the top of that. We end up with some really nice roto really, really quickly. We're going to do the same thing to her nose. We're just going to take a X spline and draw it around her nose, and we're going to link that right to the mouth lines. And then we're going to adjust the roto underneath her neck so that we end up getting a really nice fine shape around the area that we need to smooth out. Once I'm done, I can simply save and my shapes was saved right into my effect. And I can turn the effect on and off inside of After Effects. If we relaunch Mocha, we can actually save our Mocha file as an external file using File Export Project. Simply pick a name and a location and save. Now I'm going to apply these shapes and apply a blur to them all on the same layer inside of After Effects. So I need to hide the nose and the eyebrows and the hair. And then all I have to do is I can either export my tracking data or in this case, we're gonna save and close to apply our shape data. Inside of the Pixel Chooser, I can go to my mask and I can invert the mask. And I can add an edge feather. Next, I need to add a Gaussian blur. So I'm gonna go over to my search, BCC Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna drag and drop that right onto my timeline and then up my blur to about 13 and use it as a lighten layer. What that will do is that will actually preserve my details and I can take the opacity down in order to blend it back in with the original so it doesn't look too much like a Barbie doll. Using the lighten blending mode helps us get rid of the dark parts of the wrinkles while keeping the light details. Next, I'm gonna to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and put the BCC Remover Filter on top of my adjustment layer. From here, I'm gonna change the removal method from Clone Spot to Clone Shape, and I'm gonna turn the Pixel Chooser on and launch Mocha. I'm going to merge my original project back in, and now I have all of my roto that I've already created. In this case, we're just gonna leave visible the under eye section, and we're gonna save and close. From here, we can use our offset point and just drag the bottoms of her cheeks up and we can go into our pixel chooser mask and we can add a feather. It's really, really fast and easy. And because we've already tracked the shape, this is gonna move perfectly with our shot. 
We're going to do the exact same thing for her crow's feet. We're going to select our BCC remover effect and duplicate it. And now we're simply going to launch Mocha and instead of turning her under eyes on, we're going to turn her crow's feet on, close it, and save it. Now we can change our offset and bring her cheeks up. This will replace the sides of her crow's feet with her original skin tone. I can increase the scale and I can change the offset to match those values better. From here I can simply increase my feather and smooth this all out. It may take a little bit of tweaking to get the offset exactly where you want it. And so that's a pretty huge difference. Once that's complete, we're simply going to go back to our original BCC remover. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to launch Mocha again. This time we're actually going to fix the eyelids. So we're going to turn those shapes on and we're going to save and close. Now we can change our offset again and very very quickly we can fix the wrinkles above her eyelids. We're going to take our feather down to about 10 so that we don't have it too blurry around the edges and now that we've gotten rid of all of her major wrinkle patches we're actually going to use Beauty Studio on top of this so let's go to BCC Beauty and just drag and drop that right onto our adjustment layer and now inside of our Beauty Studio we can go ahead and select the highlights and shadows of her face in our keyer. That's our pixel chooser. Okay. And from here, we can actually adjust our smoothing controls to make sure that she doesn't look too smoothed out. You want the skin to glow, but not look so totally airbrushed that all the detail is gone. You can control the overall smoothing or control individual smoothing on small, medium, and large details. From here, we're going to duplicate our original layer and we're going to move it to the top because we're going to actually start to bring out her eyes and her lips a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our effects panel and we're going to type in effects and presets BCC pixel chooser. We drop that right onto our timeline and then we launch Mocha just like we've been doing. We're going to merge our project again because I don't want to redo Roto. And now we're going to turn all our layers off except for our eyebrows and our lips. We're going to select this. We're going to start to adjust some of our roto, bring this nicely around her lips as opposed to just tracking the entire shape. We use just one keyframe to do that and we'll go ahead and adjust that on our eyebrows as well. Once we save and close this, we can go ahead and change to stencil alpha and we're going to go to our mat and channel and we're going to change that to none and we need to make sure we invert our mask but I feel like I need to adjust my roto so I'm going to relaunch Mocha and then on the first frame we're also going to delete that keyframe so that the keyframe will be the same across the board. Now we can simply go to BCC color corrector we're going to drop this right onto our timeline and we're going to change the brightness to a negative six and the saturation to about 15 Maybe let's change the brightness to negative five just to make it a little bit lighter. And we'll change the saturation to 10 or so. We don't want her to look too weird. From here, we can actually go into our pixel chooser and we can change our feather to about two, maybe three. That'll give us a nice soft look that looks natural without having to have a really sharp hard edge with our shapes. Now we can make a new adjustment layer by going to layer new adjustment layer and we're going to change this to hair and we're going to rename the rest of our layers just for good measure so that we can keep track of what we're doing. We're going to drag our BCC color corrector right onto our hair adjustment layer and launch Mocha. Once inside of Mocha, we can simply go to our original file that we made, just like always. We're going to load this up and we're going to leave her hair layer turned on and that's it. Now we simply save and close and we can start to adjust this right in our timeline. In this case, we're going to adjust the brightness to about a negative five and we're going to increase the saturation as well. And we're going to add just a little bit of feathering so that we softly blend this into the rest of her hair and so that we don't have a hard edge in our blurry backgrounds. Now let's change this to maybe 15 or so. We're going to duplicate our background plate again and move this to the top. From here, we're actually going to rename this eyes and we're going to brighten her eyes. We're going to use the Mocha Pixel Chooser on this layer. So we're going to 
go to our effects and presets. We're going to type in pixel and grab our pixel chooser right onto our timeline, launch Mocha, and we're going to merge our project like we've been doing every single time. Once our project is merged, we're going to take a look at it and see if there's any tracks that we can use for our eyes to begin with. And I think there is. So we're going to stop here in the middle of our track and we're going to zoom in. We're going to take our X spline and we're going to draw around the eye. And we're only really going to draw around the whites of the eye and the little corner of the eye as well. Now once we've drawn around this, we're going to soften it by relaxing the curves. Call this eyes and we're going to link this to the under eye track. Now we have to do some simple roto where she blinks to account for that blinking animation. So let's just make a couple of keyframes and have Mocha animate the tweens for us based on the track and based on our data that we're giving Mocha. Once our animation is complete, we're simply going to save this and close it. And of course it will be applied to our layer. We're going to change it to stencil mat and we're going to make sure that the channel is none and invert our mask. And now that will put her eyes back on top of everything. So I can scroll down to my feather as well. And we're going to add a four pixel feather, maybe a six one, just to give it a little more softness. Now we can simply take our color correctors. So we're going to do a BCC color corrector and we're going to drag this and drop this right onto our layer again. We're going to bring the brightness up by about 20% and we're going to actually take the saturation down. Otherwise it looks too weird. Once we've taken the saturation down, we can decide how much we want to change our shape. In this case, I feel like we need to actually come a little further in on the eyes. So we're going to adjust our roto to do that. We're simply going to select the Uber key. The Uber key is a ripple offset, so it'll actually change everything that we do to this shape over the entire amount of keyframes that we've made. So I can use my bounding box as well to animate my shape inward. And we're going to take out the inner tear duct areas of her eyes as well of the shape because we don't want to use that in our lighten. Once we're satisfied that that looks good, we can save it and close it. And now our shape will update automatically in real time right inside of After Effects. Now from here, I can adjust my saturation. I think I want to take it down just a little bit more. And I might want to take the brightness down to about 15. Otherwise, she looks like her eyes are glowing and that's not the look that we're going for. Now we're going to duplicate the background layer again, move it to the top, and we're going to use the BCC Pixel Chooser right on top of this, launch Mocha, and we're going to merge our eye project back in. And we can actually use the same Uber key technique to bring this right around her irises. So we're going to adjust the shape to right around her irises very, very quickly. And once we're done with that roto, we're actually going to just save and close and go back to After Effects. Once I'm back inside of After Effects, I can change it to a stencil alpha. And again, we're going to use a none channel, invert the mask, and we can add a little bit of feather right over the top. And now her irises are right back over her eye whites. From here, we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we're going to actually do a very dirty trick. We're going to enlarge her eyes so that it makes her look younger, but also it makes her look more interested in you. It's a common advertising trick. However, in order to use warps, we have to use Mocha shapes. So we're going to open Mocha for After Effects by going to Animation, Track in Mocha for After Effects. Once started, it'll give us a dialog prompt and we can start tracking as normal using our X spline the same way we do inside the pixel chooser. In this case, we're just going to draw some shapes right around her eyes really quickly. And then we're going to actually make a nose shape as well and a mouth shape because we're going to put warps on all of these features. Once we track forward, we can double check to make sure our shapes are exactly where we want them and we can adjust them accordingly. From here, we're going to select all of our shapes and hit the duplicate layer button. Now we're going to take all of our duplicated shapes and we're going to alter the size of them so that we have a from shape and a to shape that the warper can use. Once we're satisfied that our from shape and our to shape is where we want it, we can go ahead and go to export tracking data and export shape data for After Effects for all visible layers. We copy it to the clipboard 
minimize mocha, select our eyes layer and go to edit paste mocha mask. Now we can simply go to our effects and presets and we're going to type in BCC warp drag and drop this right on to our layer. And once it's on our layer, it's going to try to warp our shapes. Now we're actually going to change the global warp process to less of an effect. And it's important that our shape layer order is arranged from largest to smallest and in pairs so that the warper can actually alter the shapes correctly. In this case, we're going to do a global work of let's say negative 15. We don't want to go too big on her eyes, but we do want to increase them just a little bit. And you can see that that's just enough to make her seem a little bit more engaged with you. But also we change that because the younger you look, the bigger your eyes are. We're going to add a feather. And now that blends nicely over the top of everything. We're going to make a new adjustment layer and we're going to do the same thing for her nose. So we're going to rename this to nose shrink. And we're going to drag the warper tool right on top of it, go to our mocha for after effects, and we're going to turn our nose shapes on. We're going to export the shape data right to our clipboard. And then we go to edit, paste mocha mask. And now you can see that's the opposite of what we want. So we want to go ahead and take that number down to negative 36 or so, maybe negative 20. All right. And once we have a reasonable shrinkage of her nose. Again, you don't want to go too crazy. We're going to keep it at negative 15. We're going to come in here and feather our shapes and blend it right back on top of our original footage. So now we have a very nice soft nose blend. Okay. We're going to do the exact same thing for her lips. So we're going to again, make a new adjustment layer. And then we're going to drag our BCC warp right on top of it right after we name it. So drag and drop. Now we're going to go back over to Mocha for After Effects and we're going to take our lip shapes, copy all visible layers right to the clipboard. And then we're going to go back to After Effects and we're going to go to Edit and we're going to go to Paste Mocha Mask. All right. Now that Paste Mocha Mask is on there, we're going to go into our Warper dialog. And in our Warper dialog, we're going to change the global warp to 115, maybe 120. We want to fatten her lips up, make them look a lot more lush. We're going to take our shapes and feather them and blend them right back over the top. And so there's our warp lifting her lips just a little bit. It's like plastic surgery, but digital. The last thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer and move it over the top so that we can see the difference. And from here I can render them out. So here's the before and after side by side. And you can see that we've taken years and years off of her. Now here's the original in all of its glory. And you can see that she is a good looking older woman, but we just want to knock her down about 40 years for narrative purposes. And here she is as a much younger woman. If you have any questions, go to www.borisfx.com.